the Switch has become one of my favorite consoles ever. It's the place where a good amount of my favorite games of all time call home, even if the Switch wasn't their first residence. Nintendo has really tried to make the Switch its all-in-one place for gaming, even giving us almost perfect replicas of their old controllers. They've really gone for it with this console. I picked one up at launch and have played it regularly since then. It changed the way I play games. I play the same games on the go and in my house. I don't have to budget for two libraries. I really liked the Switch, but I wasn't in love with it. With Nintendo's reliance on games that were previously made for the Wii U that I had already played for years to keep the release schedule padded out, I felt Nintendo had turned their back on me and many others. I've been quite critical about it in the past. Here's why I've started to change my mind. I found myself playing the Switch more and more as the years go by. At first, I wasn't all that into it. It felt sterile. Coming from the Wii, 3DS, and Wii U, the Switch lacks all the character those three consoles exude. There's no catchy menu music or customizable themes. Those are little things, but became some of the most memorable features about those previous consoles, especially for a handheld. The 3DS oozes charm. I fell headfirst into the 3DS. I embraced everything about it. It became my go-to for gaming for many years. With those being absent from the Switch, it felt barren and boring. But upon further reflection, I've come to appreciate the lack of both of those things. This is something that's happened recently. The Switch to me is almost a throwback to a time when the game console was just a means to play the game. It looked cool and played games. That's it. The Super Nintendo is one of my favorite consoles of all time, and it doesn't even have a menu screen. You put a game in, power it on, and start playing. That's the case for all my past favorites. They all just exist to play games. Pop a game in and get playing. The Switch is more focused on being a game console rather than an all-in-one entertainment device. Even though it has other things you can do on it, after rewiring my thinking, I've slowly been drawn to it. The simplicity of it all is very appealing to me. It helps that it's getting new game releases, even though there's tons of games from past consoles I haven't played yet. I love the whole concept of the Switch. I always have. That's the whole reason I picked one up at launch. It's a portable and a home console. This is something I couldn't wait to have. Spending lots of time in airports and airplanes, having a portable that doubles as a home console was a dream come true. I no longer had to split my time and money into two gaming worlds. I could buy more games and actually finish them. I used to find myself playing and finishing my 3DS games, but only playing parts of my home console games. The Switch bridged that gap beautifully. I love that it includes that endearing Nintendo DNA, kind of clueless, but unmistakably Nintendo. It's the only one out of the big three that offers games on physical cartridges. This is one of my favorite aspects of it. I get a tangible item that I can take out, look at, give to someone, put on a shelf, or do whatever else I want to do with it. This is something that is quickly disappearing and I'm trying to embrace it until it's gone. Digital games are extremely convenient and great to have already inside your console, but it's not an actual item you have. It's invisible code that you are allowed to play. I've loved playing game cartridges and discs on all my past consoles as well. There's something about preparing to play a game. You get to see the images on the game case. You crack the case open, snap the game out of the holder, take a look at the art on the label, hear the feel and rattle of the game cartridge, put it in the machine with all the little pops, snaps, and clicks, then it shows up on the screen with a nice little jingle. It's very different from picking a game from an image menu. You don't get that physical interaction. It's an instant process that almost feels disposable. And though physical media will soon be gone, I'll hold on to it for as long as I'm able to. The size of the Switch is great, not being too big or too small. There are three different sizes of Switches. The original, the Switch Lite, and the Switch OLED. The Switch Lite is the smallest and has the only claim on having an actual D-pad connected to the console. I find it very comfortable to use. I play on this one while I'm traveling quite often. It's very small and versatile. Before that, I used my original launch Switch. I didn't find it unwieldy or cumbersome either. I liked the increased screen size over my new 3DS XL. The Switch OLED is slightly larger than the original Switch, though the screen looks far superior to the other models. This white version has become my main Switch, not only because of the amazing screen, but I love the colors. Just like my Fire Emblem Fate Special Edition new 3DS XL, it has the contrasting black buttons against the white shell. I love that color combination and I knew I would end up getting it. But it's not just the length of the console that matters, it's also thin, even thinner than the new 3DS XL when it's folded up. This makes it quite light and capable of playing for longer sessions. I know many people have had criticisms about the Switch's size, saying it's not pocketable. I don't relate to this at all. I've never actually carried a console in my pocket. I haven't been in a situation where that was necessary. To me, it seems very precarious. 
increasing the likelihood of scratches and falls. These consoles are expensive. Growing up, I was taught to take care of my things because there wouldn't be any replacements. I took that to heart. I've always carried my handhelds and cases. I even made a whole video about what cases I use for my 3DSs. I can put my Switch in a case, slip it in my bag, and not worry about it knocking around in there. So the increased size of the Switch compared to the past Nintendo handhelds hasn't been a big deal to me. The biggest strength of the Switch is how many great games it has. I recently made a video about 5 of them, but there are many more that I could have included on that list. The majority of Nintendo's biggest properties have representation on it, sometimes even more than one game. If you would have told me that I would have a remastered version of Metroid Prime and a sequel to Metroid Fusion on the Switch, I would have thought you were nuts. Not only that, but there's also two absolutely incredible Zelda games on it. Having just Breath of the Wild was amazing, but now there's a sequel that's expanded that version of Hyrule even further. I don't know how to express how amazing that is. Having delved into Breath of the Wild with all the fervor in my heart, I was unbelievably excited to find out that we would be getting another go at that version of Hyrule. Call it a massive DLC pack, I don't care. It's great being able to revisit those places I discovered and loved. These two games could keep me busy for years and years, and they most likely will. The remake of Link's Awakening has become one of my go-to games. It's one of my all-time favorites. I'm still in disbelief that they made it at all. Speaking of Zelda, you can play just about every Zelda game on this. The really old ones on the NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, all the way up to the Wii and Wii U with Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. The only ones that are missing are the DS and GameCube entries, which makes me wonder why those GameCube games aren't on there. HD remastered versions were on the Wii U, which the Switch has many ports of Wii U games. Mario has had a really good outing on the Switch. He started out on a high note. Super Mario Odyssey is one of the best games I've ever played, and I'm not even a fan of 3D Mario games. It came out, took me by surprise, and I love it to this day. Super Mario 3D World was one of my favorite games on the Wii U, and it got a re-release on the Switch. 2D platformer Mario games are also represented with the port of Super Mario Bros. U, which was released with the deluxe moniker at the end signifying added content, and the most recent game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Other franchises like Kirby and Pikmin have had many games released as well, Pikmin having games 1 through 4 released, and Kirby getting a few 2D games and a wonderful 3D game with Forgotten Land. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze got a second life on the Switch and I couldn't be happier. There's so many good games, it's difficult to go over them all. Third party support has been incredible. Games like The Witcher 3, Doom, and Skyrim made the jump over to it, as well as other games like Sonic Mania and the Bioshock Collection. Indie titles have thrived on the Switch. I probably never would have played games like Celeste, Lightfall, and The Messenger if they hadn't been released on it. There are tons of great indie games. I had a great time with Kaze and the Wild Masks, Shovel Knight, and the Shantae games. I can't not mention the support Nintendo has had from Microsoft. It was almost unbelievable that the Ori games and Cuphead made it onto the console. It's still a little weird seeing the Microsoft Studios logo on the Switch's screen. Nintendo also made a small portion of their retro games available. There are also special versions that start you off in better positions if you aren't used to playing those classic games. I thought that was a little neat. I could go on and on about all the games you can play on the Switch. The library is vast. I'll never play a fraction of what's been released. Nintendo is finally starting to realize that they have a legacy that people love. We adored everything about those old consoles, especially the controllers. For the Switch, they've made it possible to play their classic games with the intended controller. This is huge. All these games were developed and made for these controllers. They feel and look exactly like the originals, but now they are updated without wires and extra buttons to help navigate the menus. Nintendo hasn't really cared about this kind of thing. Remember trying to play N64 games on the Wii? In the past, specifically on the Wii, they made an all-in-one, catch-all retro controller. It was well made and felt great to use, but it wasn't perfect. When using it for Super Nintendo games, it got the job done, but it wasn't the same as an actual SNES controller. Japan was blessed with the retro Super Nintendo controller through Club Nintendo that could be used with virtual console games, but everywhere else was stuck with the classic controller. This is until the NES and Super NES Classic Editions were released. These could be used for virtual console games, even though the Switch was just about to be released. It's hard to believe that these weren't made during the entire Wii's run, and only at the very tail end of the Wii U's life. They feel great, and using them while playing those old games makes it feel like they are played in the proper way. For the Switch though? They released wireless versions of the NES, Super Nintendo, and N64 controllers, and also the Sega Genesis. And the best part is, you can use them for other games as well. All those bundles that have been released can use these controllers. Playing through the Castlevania and Contra Anniversary collections with these controllers has been amazing. 
It's like I've been given a brand new NES and Super Nintendo to play on. The controller really is that important. Though, if you prefer to use something else, that's cool too. I know we all have different likes and preferences. Nintendo has put a lot of creativity and thought into the Switch, and they've executed it well for the most part. The Joy-Cons, however, haven't been one of them. I know there are people who love them, I just don't happen to be one of them. They work fine, but they are not comfortable to use. The sticks just don't give me that home console feel, though I don't know why I'm expecting it in the first place. Just looking at them, you can tell that they won't give you that. Just going from the Pro Controller to this, I much prefer the feel of the Pro Controller. Then there's Joy-Con Drift. Most of us have experienced or at least heard about it. This is where the controller is registering inputs on the analog stick without being controlled by the user. This is a big deal and has affected many people. Though, that's not the only problem with the Joy-Cons. Because the original Switch was designed to have two functional controllers attached to its sides, that means that both needed to include four face buttons. This is a great idea on paper, but in practice, it's not all that great. Who plays Switch games with Joy-Cons like this? Maybe in a pinch these would be okay to use, although in most cases, it's far from ideal, and has robbed everybody from having a proper D-pad on their left Joy-Con. From the company that invented the D-pad, they have continued to make the left Joy-Con with the four face buttons. Even having the option to buy a different Joy-Con with the D-pad would have been amazing. There are third-party Joy-Cons that have them, like this one made by Hori, but it lacks some features including the rumble. Nintendo is aware of the situation because they put a D-pad on the Switch Lite. It might not be the most comfortable D-pad, but at least it has a D-pad and it works. It's not optimal to control games with the four directional buttons, though it can be done. It's true that you can always use the Pro Controller, but the D-pad on that isn't all that great either. The 3DS has everything you need to play games developed for it, and for the retro games that were available from the Virtual Console. The Switch Lite is a more focused version of the Switch Console, having more ideal controls built in. Unfortunately, it can't connect to a TV, so I prefer to use the OLED version. It's a strange decision Nintendo is making continuing this version of Joy-Con. Being a Wii U owner from the beginning, I embraced that console and all its games. I played them like crazy. They are still some of my favorites. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Mario Kart 8, Super Mario 3D World, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and Hyrule Warriors are just a few. I played these games a lot. They are super fun and remain fun today. During the Switch's lifetime, Nintendo has relied on re-releasing these games to pad out their release schedule. For most people, this was great because they had never played them before. For Wii U owners who supported Nintendo through that time, this was a sort of slap in the face. We weren't getting new games, we were getting the same games we had already been playing for years, and now they cost even more than the original releases. It really felt like they had turned their backs on their most supportive audience. Though, I've softened quite a bit on my stance on this. Yeah, it's still scummy that things went down the way they did, but the upside is, I get to play all those great games on the go. I actually love this. Most of those re-releases have been discounted over the years, so they really haven't cost me all that much. But my biggest gripe about the whole Wii U games being brought over to the Switch is, why aren't the other good games getting the same treatment? The biggest two are the Zelda games, Where's Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. Both of those games are amazing and deserve to be played by more people. I keep thinking that we'll see the announcement when there's a new Direct, but they come and go with no sign that they're making the jump to the Switch. Let's hope Nintendo gets with it and gives us those games. Another problem with the games on the Switch is how Nintendo has historically handled their handheld and home console games. In the past, when Nintendo would release a major game for their handheld or home console, the other would get a game as well. For instance, when we got a new 2D Mario game on the DS, Nintendo made a new 2D Mario game for the Wii. The Super Nintendo has three Donkey Kong Country games. The Game Boy also got three Donkey Kong Country Lite games called Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, and 3. The NES has the first Metroid. The Game Boy got the sequel, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. The Wii U launched with the new Super Mario Bros. game. The 3DS also got a new Super Mario Bros. game. When the 3DS got Super Mario 3D Land, the sequel was made for the Wii U called Super Mario 3D World. Sometimes games were ported over to the portable systems and ended up being the definitive way to play them. That's the case for Donkey Kong Country Returns. The 3DS version has button controls and additional levels, leaving the motion controls on the Wii. Link's Awakening was supposed to be a port of A Link to the Past for the Game Boy, but was given the green light to be an original Zelda title. This hasn't happened on the Switch, because we don't have the separation between portable and TV gaming. Though, the Link's Awakening remake did come out and is a counterpart to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. If you own Nintendo's home console and handheld, you got to play more of your favorite game franchises and unique games not made for the opposite console. We don't see this anymore with the Switch. You get that one game and that's all you need. 
you can take it anywhere, there's no need to make portable specific games. It's a blessing and a curse that the Switch is both a portable and home console. These are all minor complaints I've had over the years that I've been able to look past. Sure, I can mention others like the poor performance during some games, but to me, I'm not too bothered by it. I used to like the slowdown in older games on the NES and Super Nintendo. I always thought that those sections were so intense the system could barely handle it, and that somehow made it awesome in my mind. The Switch has become a favorite of mine over the years. I've slowly come around to how great it is. Despite playing it all the time on the go, it does have its drawbacks. But the benefits outweigh the negatives for me as of right now. I like that there's no menu music or customizable themes. That's okay. I loved both of those things on the 3DS, but I need to remember that this isn't a 3DS. The Switch is an entirely different gaming machine. It also doesn't have the awesome music and ambient sounds the Wii and Wii U had, and that's okay. Yeah, I felt burned as a Wii U owner when the Switch got all of its good games, but I fully enjoy the Switch. It changed the way I game. I play the same games on the go and in my house. I don't have to budget for two libraries. I just need one. The Switch is undeniably one of the best things to happen in gaming. When it comes down to it, all I need my gaming consoles to do is play games. That's pretty much all I ask for them to do. Once I changed my thinking to reflect this, I've come around to what I think is an amazing console created for both types of players. I wasn't always the biggest Switch fan, even thinking Nintendo had turned their back on me. But over time, I've become more forgiving and letting those things not bother me. Maybe I've grown up. There's one thing I know, I love video games. And the Switch? It's a great place to play them.